if you're a Kiss fan or a Guns N' Roses fan, it's likely that you've heard the story of how Paul Stanley almost became the producer of Appetite for Destruction. Now, the way that the facts check out is that he definitely met with the band, he definitely listened to their demos, and he definitely saw them play live early on before Appetite for Destruction was released. And at least one member of the band, Steven Adler, was very excited about the potential of Paul Stanley producing Guns N' Roses' first album. If you know any more about the story, you'll know that things didn't go so well between Paul Stanley and Guns N' Roses. And in this video, I'm going to tell you what I think would have happened if Paul Stanley would have become the producer of Guns N' Roses' first album. And whether or not I think that would have been a good match, whether or not the album would have been just as good or better. But before I do that, I want you to listen to what Paul Stanley had to say about the experience. Here's Paul Stanley talking about how he almost produced Guns N' Roses. Howard came with me to meet the band, a bunch of young guys called Guns N' Roses. We had arranged to meet them at an apartment their manager had rented for them near the corner of La Cienica and Fountain. I introduced bald, pot-bellied Howard as my bodyguard as a joke, but after looking around for a few minutes, I could see why they didn't get it. Izzy was unconscious, with drool coming out of the side of his mouth. It wasn't clear whether he was sleeping or dead. That's how rough he looked. Duff and Steven were very nice, and Steven was just glowing about what a big Kiss fan he was. I didn't realize that the half-comatose, curly-headed lead guitar player who called himself Slash was what had become of the sweet kid I'd spoken to during the interviews before the recording of Creatures a few years earlier. Then Axel chatted with me and played a few songs on a crappy cassette player they had lying around. When he played Night Train, I thought it was really good, but I told him that maybe the chorus could be used as a pre-chorus instead, and there could be another chorus added afterwards. That was the last time he ever spoke to me. Ever. That night I went to see their gig at Raji's, a little dive in Hollywood. I thought the songs they had played for me were good, but they didn't prepare me for seeing the band live. Guns N' Roses were stupendous. Okay, so just from those comments, you can see that there would have been a pretty big personality clash between Axel and Paul Stanley, and that the work ethic that Paul Stanley had experienced in KISS would not be applicable to Guns N' Roses. But I think that despite those problems, they probably still could have managed to work together but there would have been an even bigger hurdle. And for this, I want you to listen to what Duff McKagan had to say about Paul Stanley potentially producing Guns N' Roses. We were looking for a producer, like you have, we got a record deal and um, the thing was to look for a producer. We, Mutt Lang was our, like, okay, let's have, That would have been so weird. Yeah, <laughs> but he cost more just to walk in the room than we had for a record of course. Deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was out, and then uh, Paul Stanley came and saw us at Raji's. I got to give him that. Like it's Paul Stanley. And we were, um, and he was into the band, but he had a different vision. He wanted to add more drums, and we just got done taking away all Steven's drums. Oh, uh, okay. No rack tom, nothing. And he, and he envisioned rack toms, and um, so that was a quick meeting. I was like, okay, well, we got to. Okay. Thanks, so. you, Mr. You know Paul Stanley. Like, we thought it was cool to have a meeting with Paul Stanley. Sure. Um, but uh, we, we had a pretty clear vision of what what our songs were sure. and, what they weren't, and what they weren't supposed to be. So I think the important part of what Duff says there is that at the very end when he says we had a clear vision of what our songs weren't supposed to be. And this is the reason, the essential reason, that I don't think a collaboration between Paul Stanley and Guns N' Roses would have been successful. It's as simple as artistic vision. Guns N' Roses was not a big anthemic, chorusy, kiss-like stage production band. They were a raw, street-level, punk-infused, proto-grunge band. By this, I don't mean that Guns N' Roses was a grunge band, but they anticipated grunge in a bunch of different ways, and they were almost an anti-KISS band. All right, just for the sake of balance, let's consider what some of the positives might have been 
had Paul Stanley decided to produce Guns N' Roses. I think one of the positives might have been that the vocals would be a little more polished. You would have seen a little bit of more background vocals and you would have seen a little bit more of a treatment of Axel's voice. And I don't mean that it would be like Freddie Mercury level overdubs or anything like this. I just think that they would have taken more time on the vocals because this is one of Paul Stanley's specialties. And then as Duff pointed out, the drum sound would have been much bigger, much more prominent. These might have given the album a different kind of spin and they might or might not have hurt the overall sound. I think that's something I'm not completely prepared to pass judgment on. But my feeling is Appetite for Destruction, the album that we have right now, is perfectly fine the way it is. And I think that altering it in any particular direction would probably be bad. Although the mix on the original Appetite for Destruction wasn't perfect. So you could see somebody coming in there and maybe smoothing it out a little bit. It might have had a, a little bit of a better mix bit of a better vocal sound and I definitely think he would have punched up all of the choruses. It's almost like Kiss and Def Leppard level which isn't characteristic of Guns N' Roses but is certainly characteristic of Paul Stanley. If Paul Stanley had actually taken on the role of producing Appetite for Destruction with the same song lineup that we now know and love, would it have been effective? I think it would have been overproduced. I think some of the songs, like maybe Night Train, maybe Welcome to the Jungle, maybe Rocket Queen, would have survived and sounded a lot more like Kiss songs, but I don't think the album would have had the same graininess to it the same atmosphere of blood, sweat, and whiskey. And I think that the album as it stands is a masterpiece. So I think it's good that Paul Stanley did exactly what he did, which was to check out the band, see that they were brilliant, and understand that they weren't right for his particular touch. This is what I think, but what really matters is what you think. So if you have an idea about this or any other topic connected to classic or contemporary music, please drop it in the section below. And remember to like and subscribe. Also, I'd like to point out that there's a join button available now for those of you who would like to support the site. If you become a member, you'll have access to members-only videos, members-only badges, and a lot of other cool perks that you can see by clicking the join button, which I hope you'll do. You can also support the site by clicking the buy me a coffee link and buying me a much needed cup of coffee. Thanks a lot.